What is the mark of the beast? That is the question we will be tackling today. And if you have not already seen part one of the video is 666, the mark of the beast, which is linked right below, I highly recommend you do because this video is going to be a continuation of the video is 666, the mark of the beast. This will be part two right here. So if you have not seen that video, I highly, highly, highly recommend you do because that is where I will be leaving off from. That is where we will be continuing. But let's keep going to figure out the truth of the mark of the beast because truth will be revealed to you today. But for whatever reason, if you decide not to watch part one, well, we will review part one and we will briefly review part one of the Mark of the Beast video so that you can get a better understanding and understand where we're coming from in context. Now, like I said, this will all be a review of the previous video that I've done, which I've linked below. So what you're looking at right now is the actual Greek symbol that John saw or Yahukanan saw in his actual vision. And in part one, we already went over Revelation or Hazun chapter 13, and we talked about the different beasts of Revelation chapter 13. We talked about and we emphasized how the first beast of Revelation is, of course, identified as the Roman Catholic Church. So we know that the mark of the beast has something to do with and correlates with the Roman Catholic Church specifically and religion itself. We also talked about and we reviewed the mark of our father, Yahuwah, and we've gone over in detail the mark of our father, Yahuwah, in part one. And we even referenced scriptures such as Exodus or Shamut chapter 13, verses 9, Exodus or Shamut chapter 13, verses 16, Deuteronomy or Dabarim chapter 6, verses 4 through 9, Deuteronomy or Dabarim chapter 11, verses 18. We also also went over scriptures such as 2 Kings chapter 19 verses 29, 2 Kings chapter 20 verses 8 through 11, and verses 16 as well, Ezekiel or Yakoskel chapter 20 verses 12 through 20, which talks about the mark or the sign of Yahuwah being the Shabbat. And we even talked about Revelation chapter 14 verses 1, even Revelation chapter 22 verses 4. If you would like these scriptures again, please pause the video or watch part one so that you can see and get a better understanding of the different scriptures that we went over the mark of Yahuwah. But we went over the mark of Yahuwah and we use scripture itself to help us identify his mark unto us, such as the Shabbat, such as keeping the Torah and the law, statutes and commandments, which I'm going to go over more in detail later on, so that we can get a better idea and know what the real mark of the beast is. And we know that the real mark of the beast is anything that is opposite or contrary to the law, statutes and commandments of our father, anything contrary to the Shabbat, anything contrary to to what he his ways are and what his laws are and we also know that following the law, statutes, and commandments is not a religion, just like following the draconian laws in your respective country does not make you religious whatsoever. So we know that and we have an understanding of that. But also in part one of the Mark of the Beast video, we also went into detail of the Roman Catholic Church because we know the mark of the beast has to do with the Roman Catholic Church when you look at Revelation chapter 13 in context and in its correct context. But we also looked at the Roman Catholic Church and we also looked at hidden histories behind the Roman Catholic Church, which I'm going to go over more of in a second. But we also reviewed some of the uh, creeds such as the Nicene Creed. And we also reviewed some of the, ca the Catholic heretics, the catechism, and how the Roman Catholic Church not only twisted scripture throughout history, but how they also removed certain laws, statutes, and commandments, how they added and taken away laws, and how they added and taken out the real mark of the beast because they took out this Greek symbol that you see in here from scripture and they added 666, the number 666 purposefully because newsflash, John did not see some numbers. He did not see 666. 
6, this is what he saw. But the Roman Catholic Church, they took out this Greek symbol that you're looking at right now, and they replaced it with 666, even though Scripture says that whosoever adds and takes away from Scripture will receive all of the plagues and punishments written in Scripture. Not only that, but that's also a commandment as well. You can read more about that in Deuteronomy or Dabarim chapter 4, verses 2. Oh, but that's not all the Roman Catholic Church did. As you will see, the Roman Catholic Church is responsible for the deaths of tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of people during its 1,260-year rule and reign. And it began in AD 538 when the Justinian Decree and Code was implemented and thusly began the papal rule of Rome, also known as the Beast System of Revelation. And this Beast System continued all the way until 1798 AD until the capture of Pope Pius VI under the rulership of Napoleon who was captured by General Berthier of France and thusly the deadly wound was inflicted. And we also went over in part one as well how the deadly wound was healed back in 1929, February 11th, 1929 to be exact, with the establishment of the Vatican City, which is what you see today. But we also went over some of the torturing methods that was used during the Catholic Church history and throughout the Roman history during the period of the Holy Inquisitions, which took place hundreds and hundreds of years ago. We talked about all of the torturing methods that were used during this time, and I'm going to briefly go over them again. And we also talked about the medieval torture devices that was used on people who did not comply and who did not accept the heretics of the Roman Catholic Church. And as you will see, these are some of the torture devices that were used on different people. And yes, this actually did happen. So we see they used the rack and we also see they use other things such as the stocks. I know this is painful to look at, but it's time you see hidden history that your pastor will not tell you and that they have kept hidden from you throughout the Zionist funded history textbooks because the Zionists also funded these tortures too. But they also used water torture. They used the heretic forks. They also used the pear. They used the branks. And like I said, I went over this more in part one, which you can look at on your own time. They also used the wheel and the breast ripper. Yes, this is true. They also put people in hanging cages who did not comply with the Roman Catholic Church and their heretics. They also used the garrote and they also used the head crusher. And, they, and also those were burned at the stake because because back then you were considered a witch if you did not comply to the rule of the Roman Catholic Church and to their religion. And just like today, how you're considered a terrorist if you do not comply to the government. Wow, has anything changed? I don't think so. But they also used the Iron Maiden, the Strapado, the Boots, uh, Judas Cradle. They used the guillotine, of course, and many more things than that. And like I said, I go even more into detail in part one if you would like to see that. But that is just a brief review of the brief history of the Inquisition and the different torturing methods and the methods of slaughter that would be used and enforced by the Catholic Church and the Catholic heretics for those who did not follow the Catholic Church, for those who did not adhere to the Catholic Church, such as what? Such as things as though what? Changing the Shabbat to Sunday, sun worship, and other things too. And also another thing that I want to briefly mention as well is they also used Islam too because and that's something we're going to go over too because Islam was also used as a force to convert people or be killed just like Catholicism and, sl and Christianity and they also did this during the period of slavery as well and by the way Catholics were not killing Christians let me repeat that Catholics were not killing Christians no they were killing the true believers of Yahuwah and his true son Yahusha and they were killing those who were following the law statutes and commandments of Yahuwah and anybody else who did not comply to Roman Catholic heresies. Those are the people they were killing and we're going to go even more into that later on.
So then you may be wondering then, what does it mean when it's talking about that whosoever did not take the mark of the beast were not able to buy or sell? Is that talking about a future prophecy? Or is that talking about something that has already happened for thousands and thousands and thousands of years? Because I'm about to reiterate with you and go over with you once again, the hidden history that has been hidden from you on purpose and how they purposely conspire to hide this information from you and how the Roman Catholic Church has conspired to use Islam as a means to kill those who did not follow Islam. And how did they do that? That is how they created Islam in order to do that and used Islam during the religious wars to do so. But it wasn't just Islam that they used to do it. They also used Christianity and the Roman Catholic Church to do it. And anybody who were not who was not compliant and anybody who did not follow the ways and the laws of the Roman Catholic Church, anybody who did not follow of the heresies of it they were killed but not only that they were not able to buy or sell because Rome was a powerful kingdom under the Roman Catholic Church and today's Vatican that is where all of this stems from that is where power came from of papal Rome through religion itself and those who were not compliant and those who were following the law statutes and commandments of Yahuwah and following Yahusha and the teachings of the real Messiah Yahusha they were not able to buy or sell at at that time and as I've said earlier, the Roman Catholic Church used Islam and other religions in order to kill the true believers and to torture them unjustly, as I have just talked about. And that is what that's talking about when it says that they were not able to buy or sell. Because Rome is like the kingdom that is like no other that has been prophesied in scripture. And by the way, religion is the number one cause of war. They use religion as a means to cause war. And yes, that includes Christianity. Because what your lovely pastors will not tell you and what your lovely ministers will forget to tell you and what all of the priests and the deacons and the bishops and the pimp and pastors will forget to tell you is that Christianity is the number one religion that has done the most killing in history. It is not Islam. It is not Buddhism. It is not Taoism. It is not any other religion. It is Christianity itself. And yes, for those of you who may not want to hear this, if you are a Christian, you are a Catholic. It is as simple as that. If you follow Christianity, you are following Catholicism because Christianity comes from Catholicism. So if you consider yourself Christian, you are really Catholic, whether you want to believe it or not it's just the darn truth and I'm trying to let you know and tell you and I've gone over this in my first part of the video that Christianity is responsible for the deaths of millions of people if not tens of millions during the holy wars the Roman Catholic Church is responsible for the deaths of over 60 million people throughout that time throughout the holy wars and throughout the inquisitions and as I said earlier those who did not comply with the Roman Catholic Church those who did not comply with the Quran and Islam those who did not comply with Mary and JC they were killed and not only that but they could not buy or sell because of the papal system known as the beast known as the Roman Catholic Church that was the one responsible for spreading these religions because what you will find is that the second beast of Revelation, although it is like a lamb, it speaks like a dragon. And that is what we will be identifying today, that second beast of Revelation, as well as the real mark of the beast. Because truth is going to be revealed to you today, and the real mark of the beast will be revealed to you today. Now that we have briefly reviewed everything that was in part one, in case you have not seen it, and maybe you have, well, now that we have a fresh review, now let's get into the real mark of the beast, and let's go and dive more into this specific Greek symbol, the same Greek symbol that was seen by Yahukanan or John himself. Because like I said earlier in this video, this is the symbol that he saw, and this is the symbol that he was given in that vision, not the number 666. 
but it's really interesting and suspicious indeed because when you look at this specific symbol you see this symbol embedded all over the place someplace and I'm gonna tell you just where you see this exact same symbol where else do we see that Greek symbol is the question and speaking of questions that is what I implore all of you to do is ask some serious questions because when you ask serious questions that is where you get some serious answers now here is a painting of what is commonly known as Jesus Christ and as you can see what do you see I'm telling you you all need to really start asking questions because that is where you're going to find some serious answers and serious things hidden behind them has it ever occurred to you or has it ever struck you odd that in every single painting and portrait and mosaic of the white Jesus Christ which is the false image by the way and I've gone over more of that in my image of the beast video and you can also read Revelation chapter 1 verses 13 through 15 and you'll see that the real Messiah has white woolly hair and that he's dark skin aka black but anyway when you look at these pictures you see the same thing you start to see that first of all he has what looks to be a halo around him okay what does that denote but also you're always seeing these two letters right here or these two symbols which are Greek symbols by the way why are you always seeing those symbols and that is what I implore you to do today is ask questions again here we are at another image which is abominable by the way just read the second commandment oh but the Roman Catholic Church they took that commandment out of their Catholic Bible and added another one breaking even more commandments but anyway when you look at this picture see you see the same symbols right there you see the halo once again which appears to be a cross right here but you also see this sat this satanic hand gesture right there and and if you've seen my image of the beast video then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when I talk about this hand gesture and for those of you who have not seen that video oh your mind is going to be blown today because like I said there's something very disturbing about all of this indeed here once again we see the exact same thing we see this symbol right here we see the Greek symbol right there we see the halo once again but we also see the what the hand gesture of two fingers pointed up and two fingers pointed down and my question is why are we seeing those things and those specific things in every picture of JC why is that always the case Here's a Russian icon of JC, and we're going to be looking at even older Russian icons, but as you can see, once again, you see the halo, and you see the ICXC Greek symbols once again. What does this Greek symbol resemble? Also, the two hand gestures right there with two fingers pointed up and two fingers pointed down. What are they trying to show us? What is it showing us subliminally is the question. Here's another image that you can see, and as you can see the halo behind him once again, and you can see these Greek symbols right there. Have you ever wondered where those Greek symbols come from? Have you ever wondered why those Greek symbols are placed in every single picture of him? Have you ever wondered these things? Have you ever stopped and asked yourself these questions? Have you ever stopped and asked yourself the questions why he has this hand gesture right there and why he makes that specific hand gesture? Has that ever Ever occurred to you have you ever asked your pimp and pastor why those letters are painted there like that in the first place have you ever wondered what those letters can mean have you ever wondered this stuff before I'm telling you now is the time to ask these serious questions and like I said all religion aside all heretics aside all conspiracies aside why is this always the case why does he always have a halo uh, right behind him why is there a cross right behind him why is that hand gesture always there in almost every image that you see of Jesus Christ. Why is that always the case? Because there's something that the Roman Catholic Church is not telling you. There's something that the Roman Catholic Church is keeping hidden from you. There is a deeper, darker secret that they are keeping hidden from you, but actually they are subliminally telling you because they're even putting it right in front of you. And you're going to see what I'm talking about, and your mind is going to be blown if you have not watched the image of the Beast video that I've done as well. But as you can see in this icon here, what do you see again? The halo symbol and the cross 
cross symbol, these letters right there. But you see these Greek symbols here again. What does this one remind you of? Where else have I seen that before? But it's not just painted and embroidered on pictures of JC. We also see it embroidered on stained glass windows, on churches. We also see it with crosses as well. And we see what looks to be a sun symbol here, especially with churches. When you go to them on Sunday, we see the exact same letters and wordings here in churches too. Why is that always the case? And what could that really mean? Because when you start asking questions, that is where you start finding the real areas. It's time to wake up and see through the gray areas and see the image and mark of the beast hidden in plain sight, black and white right there. Because what you're going to start to see is that those same Greek letters and that same Greek symbols that we see not only represents the cross, but it also represents those pictures of JC that you see all over the place. And by the way, if you've watched my image of the beast video, you'll know that I've even proven with scripture itself how the Messiah really looks because the Messiah has hair of wooly hair. That is what scripture says in Revelation chapter 1. As well as dark skin. Yes, go look it up. Revelation chapter 1 verses 13 to 15. It's time to wake up and stop making excuses. It's time to see what's been hidden right in front of you. So if that's the case, and if that's what scripture says itself, then why do you see the false white image of JC all over the place? And even worse, why do you see him being hung and nailed on a cross when scripture even says, and I can prove it with the King James Version itself, that the the Messiah was hung on a tree. The real Messiah was hung on a tree. Yes, you can look it up in Acts chapter 5 verses 30, Acts chapter 10 verses 39, Acts chapter 13 verses 29, 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 24, and Galatians chapter 3 verses 13. And you can pause this video in order to write those scriptures down. Or even better, you can watch my video below where I will link below of the Messiah being hung on a tree in scriptures to prove it because it even talks about that in the Torah itself in Deuteronomy chapter 21 verses 22 through 23. So who is lying to you is the question. That is the question that we will be deciphering today. But as you can see here, this says Revelation chapter 13 verses 18, and this is the actual symbol that we saw, but it says what? It represents Christ on a cross pierced. That is what a Catholic crucifix. Oh, Catholic, like the Roman Catholic Church, which is the beast. Is it making sense now? Truth being revealed to you today. And of course, the X symbol right here represents 600, which is key, or the abbreviation for Christ. And then we have right here this, uh, the Chi, which is the abbreviation letter for Zulon, or a beam from which anyone is suspended across. And then we have the stigma, which is a hole or mark pierced with a pointed instrument on the hands. And, and that is what you get in the Strong's 5516, which is stigma, which is also a cross. The stigma reference is being nailed to the cross, which is also key chi stigma, which is what holes in the wrong place so it means what in place of the crucifix is an idol and abomination of desolation. When you look at the cross, that's what scripture is talking about. The when it would say they would worship what wood and stone. That is exactly what that's talking about. And also when I've done a video on this as well, and you can look it up, the cross has nothing to do with the resurrection of our Messiah and the death of our Messiah, but everything to do with the worship of Tammuz. Yes, when you look at the pagan origins of the cross, you start to see that the cross was in fact used back then during times of Egyptian times with the Egyptian Ankh. There had even been hieroglyphics to prove that crosses were even used during the time of Egypt, but it comes from the worship of Tammuz and it has nothing to do with the real Messiah, nothing to do with him at all. I hope you're seeing this with both your eyes open and you're getting truth because truth is being revealed to you today. As what does scripture say? Scripture says no graven images because the crosses you will find breaks the second commandment. And I've gone over this in plenty of my videos which you can look up. But of course the Roman Catholic Church even took out that commandment so that they can just 
justify worshiping graven images and that includes the cross but it says and i think this is interesting it says what was this mark and i highly recommend you all read alexander hislop's the two babylons because you'll get some really good research there but it says it tells us of an ancient pagan emblem that has characterized this world's religious system long before the time of the messiah christ since time immemorial it began it became the sign or mark of the roman catholic church and what did the cross and all her protestant daughters i mean we read from pages 197 to 198 and this is according to alexander hislop's the two babylons there is yet one more symbol of the romish worship to be noticed and that is the sign of the cross and we're going to keep going and the papal system as is well known the sign of the cross okay let's go and the image of the cross are all in all no prayer can be said no worship engaged in no step almost can be taken without the frequent use of the sign of the cross the cross was looked upon as the grand charm remember cain the mark was his symbol of divine protection no wonder its use would become commonplace among his followers as the great refuge in every season of danger and every hour of temptation as the infallible preservative from all the powers of darkness the cross is adorned with all the homage due only to the most high and for anyone to call it in the hearing of a genuine romanist by the scriptural term the accursed tree is a mortal offense to say that such superstitious feeling for the sign of the cross such worship as rome pays to a wooden or a metal cross or wood and stone just like scripture says ever grew out of the saying of paul yahuwah Allahim forbid that i should esteem save in the cross of the, what they call the lord jesus christ that is in the doctrine of christ crucified is a mere absurdity a shallow subterfuge and pretense the magic virtue attributed to the so-called sign of the cross the worship bestowed on it never came from such a source the same sign of the cross that rome now worships was used in the babylonian mysteries just like i talked about with ancient egypt religion it was also used in ancient babylonian religion because i've just proven to you that scripture even says that our messiah was hung on a tree you can even look it up in the king james version please look this stuff up but it says was applied by paganism to the same magic purposes and honored with the same honors that which is now called the christian cross was originally no christian emblem at all but was the mystic tau of the chaldeans and the egyptians did you hear that the cross was the mystic tau of the chaldeans and egyptians the true original form of the letter t the initial name of tammuz which is what i just talked about which in hebrew radically the same as ancient chaldee that mystic tau was marked in baptism on the foreheads of those initiated in the mysteries and notice how it says they were marked with it oh like mark of the beast which is instituted today by the roman catholic church which comes from babylonian and ancient egyptian religions is it making sense and it was used in every variety of way as a most sacred symbol to identify tammuz with the sun it was joined sometimes to the circle of the sun which is what you start to see in ancient Ancient pictures of JC is it starting to make sense now Oh, but we're just getting started because Alexander Hislop continues and he says, there seems no reason to doubt that the Maltese cross is an express symbol of the sun for Lyard found it as a sacred symbol in Nineveh and such a connection as led him to identify it with the sun. The mystic Tau as the symbol of the great divinity was called the sign of life. It was used as an amulet over the heart. It was marked on the official garments of the priests of Rome. It was borne by kings in their hand as a token of their dignity or or divinely conferred authority, Ibid, page 198. Why is this so important? Because I've already just told you and identified it to you with scripture itself that the real Messiah, Yahusha HaMashiach, was in fact hung on a tree scripture even says that in five different places in the new testament itself so the question is where are you getting the cross from and the better question is where are you getting these pagan abominable images of jc when that's not even the real messiah's name even ancient russian icons depict the exact same thing now if you saw my video who are the real biblical israelites i went over this more in detail again but this icon right here is showing you an ancient russian icon 
icon of what the Messiah and the disciples. And as you can see, they all have the same symbolisms around them. They all have the same halos around them, the sun symbol. And we see it too, and even the messengers too. But who do we see here? We see the Messiah with the same sun symbol and what looks to be the cross behind him. And we also see the same Greek symbol. Why are we seeing that same symbol all over the place? And that is my question to you today. But trust me, it's not just Christianity that we're seeing this either. We see we see the same halos and sun symbols embedded in religions such as Buddhism and Hinduism and Zoroasterianism. We see the exact same thing. Why is that the case? And we always see the Messiah holding up that hand gesture. And like I said, if you have not watched my Image of the Beast video, prepare to have your mind blown. Here's another ancient Russian icon that depicts the Messiah. And as you can see, you see the what looks to be the cross behind him, but you see the exact same Greek symbol right there. You see it all over the place. I'm telling you, folks, there's something going on. Why do we see it exactly all over the place in even ancient Russian icons of the Messiah that depict him as so-called black because that describes him most notably, but why are we seeing it there too? Why are we always seeing the same thing? Here's another ancient Russian icon. And like I said, you can look at my Who Are the Real Biblical Israelites video for more on this in detail. But as you see here, we see again the IC and the XC and the Greek symbolism right there. We see what looks to be a cross behind him and the sun halo symbol. And look what he's holding up that hand gesture. Huh, who else holds up that exact same hand gesture? What other statue can you think of that holds up that exact same hand gesture I'll let you ponder on that these are the same Greek letters that closely identify with the symbol that John saw in Revelation Yahukanon why is that the case and like I said the Greek letters such as I C and X C, which is XS today are used as symbols for Jesus Christ that is painted in mosaics and portraits and pictures all over the place all of which are abominable by the way because they break the second commandment which is no graven images but the law's done away with according to the Roman Catholic Church. The law's done away with according to most Christian pastors who are Zionist funded if they are at the very top, such as your Creflo Got Your Dollars and your TD Snakes. It's time to wake up and see the truth right in front of you. But as you can see, I, I, I see XC, which is that symbol you see all over the place, as written in a Hellenistic period is a Christogram, a monogram of Jesus Christ. When JC is written in Greek, it looks like that. But if if we take the first and last letters of it, you see this, and that is where you would read it. And today it would be read as ISXS or XES with the middle symbol right there. And you can see in handwritten Greek during the Hellenistic period between the 4th and 3rd centuries BC, the epigraphic form of this symbol right here was simplified into a C-like shape, thereby giving us ICXC. But today at the time of the end, when Revelation will be understood, this symbol is transliterated as the letter S. So instead of a C, it is a letter S. Therefore, and thusly, all Christograms are painted like that where you see this exact same symbol. And when you put it all together, that same symbol we see here, when you take this symbol right there, this is what you get. The exact same symbol that we just talked about, that exact same Greek symbol. Why do you think you see it there? Yes, the real mark of the beast. What John literally saw hidden in plain sight is the symbol of JC all over the place. And what? The depicted making the same cryptic hand gestures as seen below. That hand gesture is literally the symbol of the Antichrist, literally. And I'm going to tell you how it is because he's not the only one that makes that hand gesture. Trust me when I tell you that and stay tuned for what I'm talking about. Not just Christianity that you see this symbol in either and some of all these other symbolisms with the hand gestures and everything else. Trust me on that and we're going to go over that in a minute, but you also see what appears appears to resemble a serpent as well with the middle letter right here. Very interesting and suspicious indeed. Not to mention, but when you translate this Greek symbol in Latin, you get the symbol known as IHS, which is where, which is the symbol that you see all over the place embedded within the Roman Catholic Church and embedded within Roman Catholic religions and embedded within the Roman Catholic Churches worldwide. Why do you think that's the case? Where do you think all of this comes from? I hope you're 
you're seeing the origins of this and I hope you're asking these questions because like I said, that is where you'll find the answers. Remember, let the father be the truth and let every man be a lie. Because when you look more closely at this symbol, you see it all over the place, but you also see it as the universal symbol for the serpent, which is very interesting, which is a what? Serpent in an upright coil, which is what you see in the medical industry. You see it all over the place. You see the serpent right there, but you also see it what? In Revelation chapter 13 as well, because it says, I saw a beast coming out of the sea. That is where you see it. I'm telling you what, does you, what do you think that symbolizes? What do you think that's talking about? The dragon or serpent is what's talking about the beast that gave it its power. That is exactly what it's talking about. And I hope you're seeing it with both of your eyes open. But I have said before, and I'm going to say it again, it is not just Christianity. It is all religions, period. Because the mark of the beast is anything that breaks the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahuwah, because in part one, just as I've done and talked about and even given scriptures for, we've identified the mark of Yahuwah. Well, anything that's contrary to the mark of Yahuwah is the mark of the beast. And anything that has to do with the Roman Catholic Church is the mark of the beast. And you're going to see later on how the Roman Catholic Church is trying to blend and mix all these religions together for the final deception. Do not fall for it. And we're going to go over that later on. But like I said, that's all Anything that breaks the law, statutes, and commandments of our Father is the mark of the beast. And that includes all of the hella days and the pagan celebrations that are affiliated with each and every single one of these religions. Now, you may be wondering why I'm showing you this picture of Buddha right here and how Buddha is depicted. Remember, ask questions just like we did and just like we asked questions with the JC images. Do the same with Buddha too. Because as you can see, here's a sun symbol around him with fingers held up like this a satanic hand gesture why is he always holding that up and in this one it's not two fingers that are held up just like the one in the pictures of Jesus it's what three fingers held up why is that the case why do you see these types of depictions everywhere you look? And my goal today is that you are seeing this with an open mind and with both your eyes open. Because as you can see, here's Buddha once again, a statue of Buddha, which is, by the way, pagan and abominable and breaks the second commandment. But as you can see, what sun, more halo symbols around him, sun worship. Not only that, but you see this swastika symbol right here, which is the same thing as a cross. Yes, if you look up the Buddha swastika, it's the same thing as a cross. Huh, just like what we just identified as the mark of the beast earlier. Very interesting and suspicious indeed. It's not just Buddha, it's also Krishna too. And it's interesting because if you look up Krishna in the Sanskrit, you get the word Christ. Why do you think that's the case? It's time for you to wake up and see the truth for what it is. Because as you can see right here, Krishna is depicted how? With a sun halo around him like that oh and look at the fingers right there why do you think that's the case but it's not just these images either we also see it here depicted with what the sun worship and the sun symbolisms all over the place we also see him decked out and adorned with all these things but we also see right here a creature that kind of resembles what a lamb with horns oh my goodness now it's starting to make sense like I said, he that have an ear, let him hear. I'm not making this stuff up. Now, you may be wondering what you're looking at. You're looking at a picture of who? Shiva, the Hindu deity of destruction, who is most commonly associated with CERN. Should this concern you? Of course it should. And what's, what's very interesting and suspicious and really disturbing about this picture indeed is not only the trident that he has, rem reminiscent of Zeus, but also what? Oh, do you see all... All the serpents around him that's in his head and that's right there around his neck do you see that are you seeing it do you see the sun halo around him too is it starting to make sense now I hope so, but oh, don't worry, we're just getting started. We haven't even gotten to the good part yet because here I am showing you a picture of who? Brahma, another Hindu deity. You can see the sun symbols around him, but you can also see all these hand gestures. Why do you think in every single image of religious pictures you see what? Uh, hand gestures and hand symbolisms all over the place. Why is that always the case in every single one?
because you even see it with Zoroaster as well. And like I said, ask questions. Why do you always see this with the sun symbol and the halo symbol all over the place? Why do you see him here de being depicted with one finger up? Huh, just like Buddha was depicted with three fingers held up, just like JC was depicted with two fingers held up. Why is that always the case in every single one? Do you think that's just a coincidence? Do you think they put that there because they had nothing better to do? Or is there a sinister reason behind all this. Where do you think it traces its origin from? Where do you think all of this started? It traces all the way back to ancient Egyptian religion and even ancient Babylonian religion. That is where it comes from. Nothing new is under the sun. You're looking at a picture of what? A phoenix rising out of the ashes, huh? Very interesting because in modern folklore or mythical folklore, Krishna is seen riding a creature that closely resembles a phoenix too. Oh my. My goodness, I hope you're seeing where all of this comes from. By the way, this is a depiction of who Horus, the sun god, which is where it comes from, Isis and Horus. That's where it gets its origins from, who Semiramis, Nimrod, and Tammuz, which is where you get the cross from. But in ancient Egyptian religion, you even see the Ankhs right here, which is what the cross right there, thousands and thousands and thousands of years before there even was the Messiah. And right above its head, you see what's the sun halo symbol to denote sun worship. We have an ancient Egyptian depiction of who Ra the sun god as you can see and this is the eye of Ra right there and as you can see there's nothing embedded on here but ancient pagan sun worship and what you see too is all the Egyptian onks which just so happens to reminisce of a cross just like all of the crosses that we've seen with the Buddha swastika as well as the pictures of JC. Where do you think it comes from especially when and I proved in scripture itself that the cross has nothing to do with the death of the real Messiah and everything to do with the worship of Tammuz, which was then embedded in other religions, so to speak, as you can see, an ancient religion with Ra, the sun god. And if you look at it, what does it have up here? Another sun worship symbol and the serpent as well. Do you see where it's coming from? You see all the onks right here, more sun worship symbolism, but is that all? Oh, quite the contraire, because you're looking at a picture of what's commonly known as the deity Mithras. And of course, this comes from the religion known as Mithraism. And I've gone over this in any some of my other videos. But as you can see in this ancient depiction, what is depicted around the head of Mithra? A sun symbol. And you can even see right here, it reminds you and is very reminiscent of what the Statue of Liberty, Isis, Ishtar, Easter. Is it all making sense? now here is another ancient depiction of Mithras, the sun god. And as you can see, what do they have around them? More sun worship, halo symbolism all embedded. By the way, Mithras back then, if you look it up, Mithras was worshipped and revered as its birthday on Christmas Day. And by the way, if you look at scripture, the real Messiah, Yahusha, was born nowhere near December 25th. He was born nowhere near Christmas. So why is he always revered? and celebrated on Christmas Day. If the real Messiah wasn't even born on that day, he didn't even resurrect or die on a cross. Why is this all the case? And he didn't even look like the JC that you see, and that wasn't even his name. But yet, why is that always the case? Where does it come from? Here you have a picture of Dionysus, which is a Greek sun god that was also worshipped and revered on December 25th. Very interesting and suspicious indeed. And as you can see, here he is depicted with a halo around him. Huh, very interesting, isn't it? Dionysus and Jesus. Wow, where do you think it comes from? Remember, ask questions because here is another Greek deity known as Hermes. And as you can see with Hermes, what does he have depicted right there? What is he holding? Look at what he's holding. It looks like the coil for the serpents. Weren't we just talking about that? And didn't we identify that with Revelation 13 and the Greek symbol that even re reminisced us of the serpents? Wow. And we see more sun worship right there too. And Hermes is depicted as the Greek sun god who was also worshipped and revered as his birthday set on Christmas Day. Where do you think it's coming from?
And then we also have the deity Adonis that is shown right here too. And as you can see the halo and the sun symbol, you can see he's holding a trident very reminiscent of Shiva. You can see the sun symbolism right there as well. He was also worshipped and at or around summer solstice within pagan Wiccan culture as well. Why do you think that's the case? Where do you think this is headed? Remember, when you start asking questions, that is where you find answers. And I, that is what I implore you to do because that is what I had to do and I had to seek scripture for myself and rather than listen to man and listen to what man was telling me because it's all lies and like the scripture says seek and you shall find and like I said every single picture and depiction of Jesus Christ you see the sun symbolism around him but you also see this hand gesture right here with the two fingers pointed up and the two fingers pointed downward and the cross right here when I've just even proven with scripture itself that the real Messiah Yahusha did not die on a cross but he was hung on a tree and I've done plenty of videos on this to prove it so then why do you see this to be the case and why is this the case not only for JC but also for Mary too because we have the sun symbol right there as usual and the two fingers pointing upward and downward and the heart right there set on fire more paganisms and abominations and it's in now, what's very interesting and suspicious about Mary, indeed, is that she's always seen depicted with a cross. Now, why is that interesting? Because I've just proven with Scripture itself in the King James Version in the New Testament itself that the real Messiah, Yahusha, was in fact hung on a tree and had nothing to do with the cross, a.k.a. wood and stone. But when you accept the cross into your heart, and when you accept that, you cross out the real Messiah, you cross out salvation from from the from the real Messiah Yahusha and from the Father Yahuwah because Yah is salvation that is what Yahusha means in the Hebrew Yah is salvation and even Psalms chapter 68 verses 4 says that we are to sing praises to our father's name Yah or Yahuwah but when you accept the cross you cross out salvation that is what that represents but your pastors and the churches are not going to tell you that because they want you to keep tithing your money and keep giving 10% of your money to them, even though tithing has nothing to do with money and everything to do with food. I've done a video on that and even use scripture to prove that. So who's lying to you? But when you go back to this image, like I said, you see the satanic hand gesture there and Mary pictures, but also here too. Where do you think it comes from? And I'm about to show you something, if you have not already seen it, that is going to blow your mind because not only is he depicted with this same satanic hand gesture with the two fingers pointing upward and downward but where else have i seen that Oh yeah, we see the exact same hand gesture with the Baphomet as well right there. Oh my goodness, with the two fingers pointed up and the two fingers pointed down, it's the exact same hand gesture with the halo around them too and the two serpents right there with the coil too. Oh my goodness, just as we've seen in Hermes and Shiva as well, are you starting to see it? And it's what the Baphomet goat is what that is with the pentagram behind him, which is very satanic indeed. Indeed. Not to mention this right here. What do you think it's alluding to? It's alluding to all religions, period. Where do you think it comes from? And yes, that includes Christianity. I'm telling you, it's time to wake up and see what's been hidden right in front of you all this time. Because Satan is literally telling you right in front of your face what it represents, literally. And here's the Baphomet statue that's seen in Detroit. As you can see, the two fingers held up right there and the two fingers below, the same gesture that JC makes. And by the way, that image of him, if you see my video, is what? Cesare Borgia, which is the son of the Pope, the image of the beast, which comes from the Roman Catholic Church beast system. I am not making this stuff up, folks. It's time you you see what's been hidden right in front of you because it's time to be deceived no more. Now what you're looking at is the real origin and the etymology of religion that was published by Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore which comes from the Journal of the American Oriental Society volume 32 number two published back in 1912 and we're on page 126. Now as you can see the Oxford Dictionary says the connection of the word religion with religare is to bind has usually been favored by 
modern writers. So what does religion mean in the etymology and history of religion, which is supported by poet Lucretius and others back in the 300s AD? It means to bind. It's talking about bondage and spiritual bondage. Yes, it represents spiritual slavery, and that includes Christianity. That is the origins of religion, which is the real mark of the beast, as I've just shown you today and proven to you today. What's also interesting is that when you look at certain religious symbols and religious icons throughout all of the various world religions, you start to see that they're not too much different after all. I wonder why that's the case. And right now you're looking at the Jewish star, which is seen on the Israeli flag right now. And you can see it's the what? What's commonly known as the Star of David. But what if I told you that this has nothing to do with King David at all, or King Dawid, I should say, but everything to do with the star of Remphan, what? The worship of Molech, that is where that comes from. It is a satanic star, and that is exactly where that comes from. But you also see stars like what? With the Baphomet as well, and the pentagram there. You also see with the hexagram here, and the and what? The Wiccan star as well. Very interesting and suspicious indeed. But that's not all that we see, because we also see it with the Bismillah in Islamic cultures. We also see it with the hexagram, as I've just said. We also also see it with the Christian cross like I talked about and the Buddhist cross which is of course the swastika not to mention the Ankh that's seen in Egyptian religion that which is where the cross comes from by the way but we also see it with Hinduism and Jainism with the hand that's held up not to mention the prayer and the rosary beads why do you think that there's prayer and rosary beads both embedded in within Buddhist culture as well as Catholic culture too is that a surprise or a coincidence coincidence? I think not. Not to mention the Trinity as well, because with the Trinity is embedded with all paganisms and has nothing to do with scripture and our Messiah and our Father, because they're two different things. And I've done a video on the Trinity as well, but not to mention the Ash Wednesday markings with the cross and everything, the Eucharist and the sacraments. It's all pagan and it all stems from what the worship of what the beast, that's where it's come from. And that's where we are seeing it being embedded it today and you're going to see why the Pope is so adamant about uniting these world religions together because they're trying to show you and tell you literally that they're all part of the beast system, that they're all the mark of the beast. I've gone over this in my image of the beast video but I'm going to reiterate it once again so that you will be deceived no more and so that you will not fall for the big deception that is even at the door. But this is a picture that was taken back in September 2015 that talks about the how the Pope is what? Trying to unite and merge all of these religions together into a one world religion. That is why he gathered all of these different religions from these people of all different walks of faith and came together and made blasphemous statements by saying, oh, that it's okay because we're all seeking G-O-D in our own way and we're all trying to find G-O-D in our own way and we can all find him in different ways and he's in all things and blah, blah, blah. Even though scripture tells you how you can can find him and that you are to sing praises to his name, his restored set apart Hebrew name, Yah and Yahuwah. Scripture even says that, but they're not going to tell you that because there's a bigger, more nefarious agenda of uniting all these religions together. As they're getting ready for the biggest deception of all time, and what is that big deception you're going to see in a minute, but you cannot have the new world order without the new world religion. You cannot have a one world government and a one world currency without the one world religion and that is why the Pope is pushing this one world religion and uniting and merging all religions together that is exactly why they're doing that now I'm back here at the same place at the multi-religious service that took place back in September of 2015 at the 9-11 ground zero memorial in New York City and what's interesting is if you look at the speech now I did not go over this last time in my image of the beast video but I will go over it today is when he says and notice what he says this can only happen if we uproot from our hearts all feelings of hatred vengeance and resentment and this is towards the end of his speech we know that that is only possible as a gift from heaven which heaven is he talking about here in this place of remembrance i would ask everyone together each in his or her own way to spend a moment in silence and prayer well who are they praying to are they praying to the creator of heaven and earth well if they're not calling on his name 
the answer is no. If they're calling on G-O-D or L-O-R-D or whatever else, the answer is no. But let's keep going. Let us implore from an on high the gift of commitment to the cause of peace. Peace in our homes, our families, our schools, and our communities. Peace in all those places where war never seems to end. Peace for those faces which have known nothing but pain. Peace throughout this world which G-O-D has given us as the home for all and a home for all. Simply peace. Let us pray in silence. And then they all, of course, took a moment of silence and prayer. And that is what they did. Now, while that may sound all fine and good, can't you read between the lines? Why do you think he keeps mentioning peace every single sentence? Oh, 1 Thessalonians 5. Five, three, peace and security and then sudden destruction as travail upon a woman is it making sense now i hope so now i've reiterated a lot of this back in part one as well as my image of the beast videos which i will link below so that you can see them but i will just talk about once again because you need to see what's going on but here i'm at the catholic news agency or cna which says in first prayer video pope stresses interfaith unity we are all children of god so to speak which is of course is very abominable when he tries to mention that and the way he goes about mentioning that and how does he go about doing that well i'm going to tell you how it says many think differently feel differently seeking god or meeting god in different ways by the way when you look up the word and origin of the word god you find that it is a pagan canaanite deity that is where it comes from but let's keep going in this crowd and this range of religions there is only one certainty that we have for all we are all children of god pope francis said in his message released january 6 the feast of the epiphany and i've gone over how the feast of the epiphany and all all those Catholic feasts are abominable because they add to the feast days that are talked about in Leviticus or Baikra chapter 23, breaking more commandments. But when he talks about what, how all of this is abominable, trying to merge all these religions together and try to say that, oh, well, we can all seek G-O-D in our own way. We can use this way to seek him. We can use that way to seek him. We can use Sikhism to seek him, even though scripture itself tells us how we are to seek our father whom created heaven and earth, none of these religions which match that description whatsoever. So therefore, he is blaspheming the name of our Father, and he is blaspheming the word of our Father, Yahuwah. But the question is, do you see it, or are you still deceived? My hope is that you are not. Now, this was interesting from a CNN headline, and I talked about this too, but it reads, why all faiths can unite to end modern slavery. Oh, but what CNN is not telling you, and what they're not telling you, is that the word religion itself means to bind and I've already proven that and you can read the article below so you can learn more about it and about where the word and etymology of religion comes from so how can all of these religions unite to end slavery if they're the cause of slavery and bondage which means to bind to begin with how can that be the case and how can the Pope continue to make these blasphemous statements about oh we can all seek our father if we just seek him our own way and if we seek him according According to this religion and that religion and that'll be the way to seek him and that'll be okay and we can all unite under the one world religion to seek the father don't you see the bigger agenda and also why is the vatican so adamant about talking about martians all of a sudden and talking about so-called aliens what deception do you think is about to take place and do you see how all of this relates to that bigger deception that is even at the door and what is that deception what is that big deception that is coming project blue beam is that deception if you have not watched my project blue beam video please do because it's urgent now and it's urgent that you see and sense the urgency of this because this is not a game this is not a joke your elite and your government and your military have been vehemently and adamantly preparing for this stuff since the beginning of time and what project blue beam is in a nutshell is that it's holographic projection screens and laser technologies that will be in force when the fall Messiah gets here because you're going to see a Jesus Christ all right oh you're gonna see a JC because when your lovely president and when your lovely Vatican when they all come onto the screen and when they say oh my gosh we've made contact with aliens oh my goodness we made contact with aliens watch out we all need to merge as a new world order and fight off this threat with space-based weapons that do not exist then that is how they are going to plan everything ahead of time because when destruction takes place they are going to 
to fake their millennial. And I hope you're seeing that. And what they're going to do is they're going to put these images on the screen. Note the two fingers again. Where else have you seen that? But you're going to see these religious pictures in the sky. And will you bow down to a hologram is the question. Because according to Project Bluebeam, you're going to see Jesus Christ in Western countries and Western nations. You're going to see Muhammad in Islamic nations. You're going to see Buddha in Asian countries. And you're going to see Krishna in Indian regions. That is what they're planning for. Do not fall for the deception. Be deceived no more. See what time it really is and see why they're pushing all this stuff and be deceived no more. You may be wondering then, what is the truth about all of this and where where can you find the truth according to scripture itself? Well, I am about to tell you. And you may be wondering too, how can you break free from the spiritual bondage that is religion itself? And that includes Christianity because it's no surprise or coincidence that you see halos and sun symbols embedded all around Jesus and Mary and Buddha and Krishna and Horus and Ra and Mithras and Dionysus and Hermes and Adonis. And it's no surprise that they're depicted with crosses. And it's no surprise that they all celebrate birthdays on December 25th, the venerable day of the sun, the birth of the sun deity, and it represents sun worship. So it's no surprise. So then what is the truth? How can you break free? Well, let's go to scripture itself to find out what the real truth is. The answer to all of your questions is the word of our father, Yahuwah itself, is the Torah, is the law, statutes, and commandments themselves. Because I'm here in Psalm 68 or Tahalim, 68 and we're going to be reading from verses 4. Now it says and this is a truth network so we restore the set apart Hebrew names for our father Yahuwah and his true son the Messiah Yahusha but it says sing unto Elohim another way to pronounce that is Allahim sing praises to his name extol him that writeth upon the heavens by his name Yah and rejoice before him. So what's his name? Yah? What's his name? Yah? Or Yahuwah? So that's the name of our father that we just identified in the King James Version itself. So we are to sing praises to his name, Yahuwah, and not to take his name in vain. And when you look up where Lord and God come from, like I said earlier, G-O-D is the name of a pagan Canaanite deity. And Lord, well, when you look up the word Lord in Hebrew, you get Baal. You're calling on titles. Lord and God are titles. They are not names of our Heavenly Father in heaven, Yahuwah. That is his name. Lord and God are titles. That is what that's talking about. And I hope you see that I've done many videos on the name. Please check them out. But even Psalms or Tahalim chapter 119 even tells us the truth and tells us what we are to be doing. That is the truth. And I'm going to be scrolling down so that you can see it in verses 142 so that you can see the truth for yourself. But I highly recommend that you read this chapter to its entirety on your own time. And I'll leave the link below so that you can do that because you're going to see that his word is in fact truth. Just as I have said in part one to this, what? The mark of Yahuwah is following the law, statutes, and commandments. And the mark of Yahuwah includes the Shabbat and all of the other law, statutes, and commandments. And anything contrary to that, anything opposite of that is the real mark of the beast, which is religion, Christianity included, as I've just proven to you today. But I wanted to read from Psalms or Tahalim chapter 119 and verses 142, which says, Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and thy law is the truth. So what's the truth? Thy law is the truth. That is the truth. So following the law, statutes, and commandments, that is the truth. Following the law, statutes, and commandments of our father Yahuwah, following the Torah is the truth. But according to your Christian pastor, the law is done away with. According to the Catholic Church and the Roman Catholic Church, the B system, by the way, which is funded by those Zionists, what? The law is done away with according to them. Just like what? The man of lawlessness in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Is it making sense now? Because nowhere does it say, nowhere does the Messiah even say that he came to do away with the law because he did not. You can read that about Matthew chapter 5 verses 17 through 20 and even John chapter 14 verses 15 where the Messiah Yahusha even says that if you love me, keep my commandments. Which commandments do you think he's talking about because newsflash there was no such thing as the new testament during the time of the messiah 
So then if the law is not done away with, and I've even proven this with scripture itself, and the Messiah even says that he came not to do away with the law, then how can you follow the law today? Although we cannot follow all 613 commandments to a T, yes, because it's more than 10, we can still follow and observe the Shabbat or the Sabbath day, which is the seventh day of rest. We can also definitely start to follow the feast days and the seven feast days that are highlighted in Baikra Leviticus chapter 23, which includes past. Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, Pentecost, trumpets, atonement, and tabernacles as well. And we can also start to follow the dietary laws that are mentioned in Leviticus or Baikra chapter 11 and Deuteronomy or Dabarim chapter 14. And yes, that means getting away from pork and getting away from shrimp, lobster, crab. Yes, that is what that's talking about because there's a serious consequence if you continue to eat pork that is in Isaiah or Yashayahu chapter 26. But you could keep sitting there and thinking that the law is not done away with. Oh, you're going to be in for rude awakening and definitely even following the Ten Commandments as well because what you start to find is that Christianity breaks the first four and so do all those religions because the first one is thou shalt not serve other deities or other Allahims except for Yahuwah while serving other images like the ones I just talked about including JC. That breaks the first commandment. Breaking the second commandment is no graven images. Well, when you have a graven image of Jesus or Mary or Buddha or Krishna in your house or whomever, that that is breaking the second commandment, which is what the Roman Catholic Church even took out of their own scriptures. I wonder why that is breaking more commandments. And then the third commandment is not to take the name of Yahuwah in vain. Well, that is exactly what you do when you use the word Lord and God. And yes, the KJV version says L-O-R-D because they took out the original Hebrew names and added Lord and God as substitutes breaking more commandments courtesy the Roman Catholic church beast system oh my goodness and then the fourth commandment as well which is what to honor and keep the shabbat or the sabbath day which is the seventh day of rest well the roman catholic church what did they do the catholic church came in and they made the seventh day they changed it from the seventh day of rest and they changed it to the venerable day of the sun courtesy the nicene and the laodicean creed and that is exactly what they did they made sunday the new sabbath because they say oh the Messiah Messiah was resurrected on Sunday. Well, when you even look at scripture itself, no, the Messiah himself was resurrected on the Shabbat or the Sabbath. He even says, Yahusha even says that he is what you may call Lord or master of the Shabbat or the Sabbath day. So you can see all of these changes have been twisted and flip-flop courtesy the lies of the Roman Catholic Church. But which one will you believe? Will you believe truth now or will you believe the lies? And for more help and information, and resources on how you can follow truth, which is the Torah, please check out my Living Righteously series and my Scriptures Often Ignored series here on YouTube. And you can also check out some of my other videos, which I will link below, that talk about if the law was actually done away with, with Scripture proving and saying otherwise, as well as other resources, resources such as clean and unclean foods and things of that nature. But it's time you see truth for what it really is. So then you may be wondering then, do I have to take the RFID chip? Because I've just identified in part one of the video that what, 666 is not the mark of the beast. We've already identified the real mark of the beast, which is that Greek symbol that's seen, which represents religion. So what does that mean for the RFID chip? Does that mean that you can still freely take it? No, it does not. Do not take that chip. Do not get that chip implanted. Whatever you do, do not get it implanted. Why? Because not only does it break Torah and break commandments, and you can read Leviticus chapter 19 or by Ikra chapter 19 verses 28, not only does it do that, but also it's a way for the government to control you. But do not be fooled and do not fall for the hype. This is not the real mark of the beast. The mark of the beast has been established and has been in place for hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands and thousands and thousands of years. So and like I said, my hope today is that you see truth with both your eyes open. And like I said, I hope that today that you really see the truth and the lies exposed for what they really are and where these lies are coming from. And like I said, my other hope too is that you start to seek the Father on your own and that you get out of religion, get out of Christianity, and more importantly, get out of these churches and away from these pimping pastors who are only trying to pimp you out even more because I've done plenty of videos on the church 
church and the exposing the church and the lies of the church. And hopefully you're seeing the truth because truth has been revealed to you today, but rather get away from the lies, get away from religion, come out of Babylon, be deceived no more and seek Yahuwah, the name of our true father, the restored Hebrew name of our true father and his true son, Yahusha, so that he can reveal the truth for you so that you can seek truth on your own. But this is Truth Unveiled here saying peace, love, and as always, shalom.